go to more in-person CE and talk to dentists older than you. There's so much value in saying to a dentist, what would you have done different if you were in my shoes? What's something you wish someone told you before you bought a practice? Dentists are so willing to share one-on-one and face-to-face. The sad part about dentistry, Patrick, is our dental school is kind of like the Hunger Games, and it makes you feel like you don't want to raise your hand in a crowd. You don't want to share your views. I hope what I do online helps people feel safe-ish, but sometimes people don't feel safe posting online. But sitting with coffee, a glass of wine, a bagel, dentists are amazing sharers, so amazingly helpful. So if you want to work, if you want to retire one day and hang up the handpiece, it goes both ways. So one thing I want to get out of that, that, that get out of this is go to more in-person CE and just talk to each other face to face. The Dental Brief is brought to you by Omni Premier Marketing and the amazing guests who bring wisdom and advice that you can put to use to take your business and practices to the next level. Find us on Facebook and join the conversation. Get ready to grow because we are kicking off the next episode in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. I am thrilled with our guest today to take his time to come on the program. Very busy guy. Um, A lot of you uh, know him as Dr. Nacho. Um, Check out the Facebook group. We talk about that many times. There's so much great information on there. But Dr. Paul Goodman, say hello. Hey, thanks so much for having me on here. I love doing this, Patrick. Uh, kudos to you. So be proud of yourself for creating content like this. I love when you make content like this, people listen to it now, they can listen to it later, years from now. So really appreciate you having me on today. Hey, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're, we're the abundance uh, philosophy. I know you do too, yeah. um, right? Just help people, help people, help people. You, you just can't go wrong with that. Um, dental nachos, I think the last time you were on, you had 30,000 something, uh, People in that group on Facebook now, I think I saw yesterday, 42,000 and change, 43, maybe. I'm yeah, right. actually, we're at 40, 46,000 we passed. So it's, it's it's past my age. I'm 45. I always want to be past my age. So we, we eked it out. We're past my age. People have to keep joining as I get older. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and it's a, a great group. The topics on there are excellent. Saturday mornings is a great time to be on there. I think that's right. what I've noticed. Um, the most amount of lively uh, conversations that build people up. And you're all about building people up. But let's jump right into today's topic of the show. You know, we talk about spending time with your grandmother. That's great. When, you, when you're traveling, and, and, and we'll get to why you're passionate about what you do and see and building these relationships. But when you're traveling around, what is a common problem that you hear that dentists and practice owners are talking about? What are, what are they coming to you saying, hey, I'm having this issue? What is it? I mean, there's it's kind of a, in, a, in a world of dentistry where there's so much amazing technology. And I say a lot of times, dentistry is amazing. What we can do for patients is phenomenal. Uh, the life of a dentist, that is, I believe, truly under attack. So that's interesting. But I always think with all this technology, you know, what I hear dentists talk the most about is challenges with their team. You know, I'm a failed NBA superstar, as we talked about. Patrick yeah. played a lot of sports growing up. And building a team to succeed is a challenge. We just saw with the NFL playoffs, even some of these people, these at the highest level of their game, make mental errors, argue on the sidelines. And I think to give Dennis and their team a little bit of maybe grace, I believe there's no other job where you are working shoulder to shoulder with people in such a stressful environment defined by this. Your customer doesn't want to be there. I am not going to pretend that being a dentist is like fighting crime or fighting fires. So I'm not saying that, but the energy around going in daily, being with your team and your customer base for the most part, not wanting to be there creates a lot of friction, which leads to challenges. And as we've seen over the past few years, people have left dentistry. They've wanted to be sommeliers in Napa. They want to work from home. I don't judge them at all, but you know, I mean, I don't know what your favorite sport is, but like if you don't have a fifth player on your basketball team, it's going to be tough to win games. And many dentists right now, is this in Ohio giving two lectures to the Seattle Study Club? That was their number one challenge, team management, getting good team members, uh, creating a positive team environment. You, you know, I, I know you like to talk about getting dentists together, and that's great. I think that's an awesome thing, and people talking and people sharing. If if you had a dentist at a table at, at a CA event, and there was nine other business owners from, it doesn't really matter the industry. We could take healthcare. That seems like a direct connection, but you could take Lawyers, any high-level professional, highly educated, intelligent people that own businesses and put them out of the table, they face a lot of these exact same problems, don't they? Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm part of this business group called Vistage. I kind of describe it like a new mom's group for business owners. So we have people who own an asbestos company, real estate company, and we meet once a month. It really is a valuable thing. So we all talk about the same challenges. I have to share 
you know, I'm a big fan of this guy, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. So what's the difference yeah. between op optimism and delusion? So if I said, hey, Patrick, I'm very optimistic. I'm going to make it in the NBA. It's pretty delusional, right? If I yeah. say, hey, Patrick, my practice is never going to grow, that might be too pessimistic. So where does reality fall? So the reality I talk for, de and I'm a dental practice owner, and I just I got a text from my brother this morning that one of our team members is out. We have to do this. What most businesses, if you're not a restaurant, if you're not a barber shop, hair salon, dental office, you know, you often can manage without all of your team in all day because you have some remote ability to deliver to customers. Sure. With the dental teams, if someone is missing from playing the game, it creates so much stress. I mean, in some ways, I don't want to call it a broken system. Patrick, we have this amazing prosthodontist, like a superhero of dentistry, right? He can have six patients to place 12 dental implants and first help these patients chew and smile with confidence and second, make money so our office stays in business, right? Those are two important things. I'm not an economist, but if your office goes out of business, Patrick, can't help anyone. Right. His whole day can be dependent on one amazing assistant that knows how he works. And if his or her child's sick or she's sick, the whole day is shot. And I've actually not really seen other professions where there's so much vulnerability. So we try to create a bench. My brother said, you know, we do over put more than more than we put more players than we need to play the game because we know we're pulling somebody from sterilization to help here. And I just think you're exactly right. All business owners do say this, have these challenges, have turnover, have shifts. But Dennis, like my grandmother said, we're very special people. We have a very special yeah. business model. Awesome. So we know there's this problem, right? It's a, it's a big problem. And it, it all comes down to, it points towards leadership, I think, right? Yeah. Everyone needs to work on being a better leader, but what are, and, and that takes time. It's not something that happens instantly, but I think great leaders never fully mature themselves, right? It's something, it's a quest, something they're always trying to get better at. What, what are some takeaways today? What are some steps that Dennis can do to be better leaders, to boost their team, um, to build up a, a team that, and, and have those players that are able to come off the bench? What are the answers to these, these problems? I think the answer to this is what I've shared with people to share with Dennis in Ohio. And I'll give you two ways to make this better. And one is to invest in public speaking skills. So many dentists say, I don't want to be a public speaker. I say, well, that's weird. You public speak to 14 patients a day. You public yeah. speak to your hygiene team. So I believe that when you take speaker training, I've taken a lot of it over the years, you learn how to deliver a message in a way that's as clear as possible, as concise as possible. And I think dentists and leaders expect people to live inside of their heads. That hasn't been invented yet. Who knows? Maybe in like the fifth dimension, it will for, for sure. our children. But uh, two tips I can give you and your listeners. One is same name as you. Patrick Winston uh, wrote, did a content piece called How to Speak. It has a few YouTube views. It has 13 million, 13 million. He's an MIT professor, passed away a few years ago, but he delivered 60 minutes to MIT students about how to find a job and deliver your message. It is the best piece of speaking content that I've ever uh, watched. And I've done a lot of training and I listen to it and watch it. I've watched it 20 times through. So people can go on YouTube and listen to that. That's totally free. And then the other is find a speaker coach, uh, join Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Leadership is about people understanding your message. And if we think about speaking another language, right? You know, you wouldn't just say, hey, I can go and speak Spanish and go to Mexico without training. So leadership language has its own language. So that would be my takeaway. Yeah, and the communication, huge part of this. What about hiring people, right? So that, it starts there too, right? Hiring the right people, right? Onboarding the right people. And by the way, we'll post links to that video. Sure. Toastmasters, for anyone who doesn't know, look it up, it's a great organization. Um, can do a lot for you. There's local chapters everywhere. There's literally tens of thousands of, of Toastmaster uh, chapters. For uh, hiring, what are some secrets that you had? I, I saw, uh, I'm connected with you personally on Facebook, your, your, your personal profile, and I, I noticed that you were um, talking a, a few weeks ago about a new amazing rock star employee that you hired and onboarding them. You're, you're building that process up, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. What's your process look like there? I mean, dentist tend to be extraordinarily dramatic. And they sort of say, do you wanna work for me or not? Is this what you wanna do or not? So one of the things that really drives me nuts or nuts, Patrick, is people say, if you love being a dentist, it's worth it to take out $700,000. If it's sure. your life's mission to do fillings, you could take out that 600K. And I say to every single one of those dentists, how do you get to test that out? 
do they let you go to filling fantasy camp? And the challenging answer for dentists is you don't get to taste test what being a dentist is like because it's illegal. You can't do right. that, right? And right. with other positions, though, I've created that. I'll tell you just a quick story. Uh, I look to hire from anywhere, awesome people from anywhere. So we had amazing babysitter for our ch child, children, so organized, helped us move, all this stuff. Teacher, she said, I need a break from teaching. I don't think I can do this anymore, okay? So I said, why don't you come work with us at this made-up company in my head called Dental Nachos, right? So she comes in for the interview, meets the team, comes in for an observation day, and she says, you guys are amazing, but I do not want this job. I don't know what I want to do with my life, but I just don't know if this is for me. So I, you know, I said, totally cool. Thanks for coming in for that. But she came back to babysit my children. And I said to her, I won't use her exact name. I'll say, I said, Mary, I still think you should work for us. How about this? How about you work for us for 30 days? You'll be on our events team. You'll help move things forward and use your organizational skills. I'll pay you the equivalent of the salary that I pay. Let's just use this salary for this example as $48,000, right? It's not the exact salary. I'll pay you $4,000 no matter what. And after 30 days, you tell me if you want to stay here, okay? You tell me if you want to stay here. If you don't want to stay here, cool. 15 days, she says, I want to stay here. And I just thought it was a really cool system because I created a taste test. And I think dentists can do the same thing. Hey, you want to be a dental assistant? You're not so sure? Work with us for a month. See what it feels like. You'll work with a bigger, stronger dental assistant. You have to have training. You know, she worked with bigger, stronger, just metaphorically speaking, team members at Dental Nachos. So I think hiring, we need to create an ability to taste test jobs before we make long-term commitments. Because I think that's where misery happens. I don't know how to do that for being a dentist, Patrick. But I do sure. know how to do it. I have Dental Nachos. Dentist Job Connect and two dental offices, and I can do that for all of those those businesses. Yeah, that's awesome advice. Uh, I'm going to ask you another question. It's not related to um, advice. If they if our listeners check you out uh, at these following events and platforms, um, they're going to get a ton of free information, great Thanks. content, useful information um, that's going to help them every single day. A little bit. So it's just awesome. I think it's a great way to, to digest content. I mean, do a great job of that. Tell me what's next for Dental Nachos. Are you almost fifty thousand? People, you'll probably, I'm sure you're going to get there before you turn uh, 50. You'll probably get to 60,000 before you turn 50. Um, what's going on? What's on your radar? My, in the Gary V world, and I just really like him so much. I was on T with Gary V. I can share that with you. I'm really, really proud of that. I'm really into deepening the connections with my audience instead of widening them. So if we grow wider by, that's cool. But I'm really saying, hey, we've created this free park. I'm in Philadelphia. I love parks. I've created this free park, social media park, right? It's Facebook, Instagram, text message, email. Now I want to find who in the park wants to move forward in a meaningful way. Let's say we are going to put, you know, we're trying to make dentistry better. It's a for-profit company. We have C, we have events, we have sponsors, but I'm really looking for people who want to do good things for the profession, like hosting a dental student in their office to see what dentistry is like. Like, you know, we talk about private practices and DSOs, I have Job Connect. And there's not enough jobs for the graduates to get jobs without DSOs. And private practice owners go, well, I can't afford an associate full-time. I said, can you, can you afford one part-time? Because maybe there's another dentist in your area that can afford one part-time. And maybe you two working together could find a full-time job for a new dentist. Sure. Because Gary Vee talks about altruism and selfishness. So if you're totally altruistic, you're going to not have a home. You're going to give away all your money. But if you're totally selfish, you're not going to make things better. So there's a balancing act there. So for me, right. part of the balancing act is I'm attached to dentistry, right? I do dentistry one day a week now. I work like nine out of seven days a week, but I own dental practices. So in Rittenhouse Square Park, Patrick, if I organize the cleanup day, well, I don't have to see trash when I walk my dog there, right? So even right. though they say, look at this guy, he's being so altruistic, I'm also being selfish because I want a clean park for my golden doodle. Well, in dentistry, sure. I would like to make the dental park the best dental park it could be by having the authentic, uncomfortable conversations. I work with DSOs daily. I help them find associates. There's places for both. I mean, I'm in Philadelphia. We got chain restaurants, corporate restaurants, and we got chef-owned restaurants, and people use both of them. So my whole goal right. is to hopefully next for Dental Notches and Dentist Job Connect, be part of the solution to a happier dentisting world with the help of the people who've been participating in this group for the past four years. Yeah, that's an amazing why. Um, I don't want to take anything away from that at all because it, it's fantastic. I'm only going to say this. If you don't have a why like that, look for one. Find something that you can get 
as passionate about them. I'm speaking to our audience, not you. You have your why. Get your why. I have my why. Everybody should have one. That's a, a fantastic why. Appreciate you giving back. Appreciate your time on the phone. Folks, check out or on the on the show today. Check out Dental Nachos on Facebook. It's an amazing group. Dr. Paul Goodman, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, Patrick. Great show.